What is going on, everybody? Sam Dog, the infamous 253. Brendan Nelson coming at you guys for the Week 17 preview of our NFC West champion, Seattle Seahawks, taking on the San Francisco 49ers in State Farm Stadium in Arizona because of the whole COVID restrictions. And a lot can go down for win this game, and if we get a little help by some miracle from the Bears and the Panthers, could possibly be going one seed or two seed, but probably most likely will be the three seed. Depending on what happens, regardless, we would have to win our game. Brendan, how you doing? I'm doing good, Sam. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, definitely happy. Definitely happy to be doing this again. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you start this out first. So first step for this one is obviously just win and get the three seed. But this really comes down to what other teams are gonna do. But are we also possibly pending what happens in some of the other games? Could we rest the starters later in the game? Yeah, um, I would certainly like to do that with at least some players on this team. I think that Bobby Wagner is out of gas. He's just not holding up in coverage. He's getting picked on in coverage. He's not looking very fast. Uh, There are players like K.J. Wright who are playing well, but because they're old and have a lot of wear and tear on their bodies, I'd like to see them get the game off. Possibly Tyler Lockett. Possibly Tyler Lockett because he hasn't looked right for a little while now. Hasn't really been a explosive playmaker in maybe two months I'd say um arguably even players like Dwayne Brown Mike Upati Russell Wilson Chris Carson there are a lot of players on this team who I think could benefit from some time off and it's very unlikely as you covered that we're going to get that time off from a bye week because the odds of that happening are just very very low so more than likely if we want to give these players some time off, the only way to do it will be to sit them for some of this game. So I would be interested in seeing that happen, especially if the Saints and Packers are taking care of their business by halftime, say. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's only if they're taking care of business. But another thing to for sure that too would be to just jump out early on the 49ers, something the Arizona Cardinals failed to do last week against their back against the backup quarterback and CJ Beathard, who we're most likely going to see. And then of course we do know they're going to be playing spoiler because they got Jeff Wilson Jr. And George Kittle back, which Jeff Wilson Jr. Had a huge field day against the Arizona Cardinals last week. So got to make sure to remember that there's still threats that, that the Niners are still going to try to play spoiler. And then Throughout the league, there could be a very good chance that we see the Rams again in the playoffs if they're able to take care of business against the Cardinals, which, pending what happens with, because, you know, the Rams are going to be without Jared Goff after he just had the surgery on his thumb. So could be a chance we see them again, probably maybe not, pending if the Bears pull off the upset against the Packers and if the Cardinals beat the Los Angeles Rams. But obviously for first key, we got to take care of shutting down the threats of Jeff Wilson Jr. and George Kittle and, of course, Brandon Ayuk and other receivers, too, and getting pressure and sacking C.J. Beathard. But well, we... I'm pretty sure Brandon Ayuk's out, actually. He is? For whatever that's worth. Okay. So they got no receivers in Frisco because they already don't have Debo, and now it looks like they don't have Ayuk. So they're very thin at receiver. We already know about their injuries on the offensive line. Trent Williams is not playing. And then that adds on to the injuries that we already know that they have. Mostert, Garoppolo. all the way back to Bosa and Solomon Thomas in week two. So this is a very depleted Niners team. They are playing tough right now. They did play spoilers to Arizona. That was a crushing blow to their season. And they're not playing. They're not trying to tank. Obviously, at this point, they've won too many games to do that. So I imagine they are going to hit the field on Sunday and go all out trying to get this win. And like you said, potentially play spoiler. And to me it it is a sign of their about how, of how well coached that niner team is because most teams in the NFL would not be this competitive if they had this many injuries so i'm going to be looking for what i see from this defense in this game because as many players as the niners are missing they continually find a way to produce with whatever they happen to throw out there like you said bethard Now, we know Beathard is not a good quarterback. We have many games worth of evidence to prove that. But Kyle Shanahan can get a little bit out of him. Like you said, Jeff Wilson Jr., very unique, very interesting player that they have in there. Uh, George Kittle, the fact that he's even on the field is a pretty strong indication that this Niners team has no interest in tanking because um, he's coming off a pretty major injury. So 
if there was any desire to tank, he would not be on the field at all. So, yeah, I, I mainly want to see what this defense does because the defense played probably their best game of the year against the Rams. Yeah. So we need to keep building on that. And Jamal Adams had a very key stop. Granted that uh, Henderson did convert it for the first down and basically he got injured on the play. And then what the linebackers were able to do with uh, KJ Wright and Jordan Brooks, I would say came up pretty big and they were vital to that goal line stand last week that we had against the Rams. But Granted, I know Brooks is a rookie, and who knows what else he could possibly bring to the table. I mean, a lot of people – I mean, I know you were one of them that didn't really like the pick and that like didn't like the pick, but who knows? I mean, Pete and John always like to surprise with that too. But and, often uh, – he, he is a good player. I, I, I always thought that there was a pretty good chance he would end up being a good player. My question was what would it ultimately mean? But right now he is playing well. The Rams game was the first game – of his career that I've seen where I thought he looked special. So that was good. Yep. But um, I'm not really thinking about that too much right now. I'm, I'm thinking about guys, you know, I want to say DJ Reed as well, because now we're going to be leaning pretty heavily on DJ Reed because there's no Dunbar coming back. We know that yep. flowers, we don't know. <clears throat> and we also don't know if flowers is going to be any good when he comes back because he already was barely holding on as it was. So. To me, the main thing that I want to see from this game is the defense continue to trend in the right direction because they're finally playing really good football right at the end here. I recently uploaded my own video about the pass rush. I counted 20 QB pressures in that game against the Rams on 46 or 47 dropbacks. That's huge, man. That is huge. And that's way better than we've done in any other game this year. So if, if we can sustain that going into the playoffs, we can beat anybody. Yes, I agree. I agree. And I also saw another thing when you mentioned DJ Reed. I recently saw something from an article saying Kyle Shanahan regrets waving DJ Reed, which I, I, I see that as a huge win for how good Reed has been playing for the Seahawks, and especially when he got the interception against his former team earlier in the season. So if he keeps playing, playing up, playing good like that, you know, I, I hope that he can just continue to just keep on grinding it. But another thing is still – like we said, we just got to try to limit George Kittle and Jeff Wilson Jr. Shut those guys down. Keep on applying pressure to Beathard and maybe see if we can make them chuck up a couple of, a couple of interceptions or two or see if we can strip, strip sack, fumble him and get some turnovers, maybe three turnovers. And then, of course, on the offensive side, is uh, their rookie uh, Kinlaw playing at all? Or I know we all know Richard Sherman's out and probably done and most and well 100% most likely from what I've seen be done as a San Francisco 49er. But what about Yeah, I believe Kinlaw is playing. I I believe that most of their defensive players will be playing at least the ones who haven't been out all season <clears throat> in terms of guys like Fred Warner and um Law. Eric Armstead. Yeah, Armstead, Armstead, Warner, uh Greenlaw. Right. So like I said, there's nothing in this Niners team right now that tells me that they are tanking. So that defense has really been pretty good almost the whole year when you really think about it, right up until last week where they had a great game against a good offense in Arizona. <clears throat> they, they, what did they hold Arizona to, 12 points? It was a great game. Points. And, you know, I, one thing I want to say about this Niners team is that I was not a big fan of, of Robert Saleh going into the season, but I think he's had a really good year. That team – has had a lot of defensive injuries, and they're playing well. Sala is going to get a head coaching job somewhere in this league after this year, possibly. He's going to yeah. get, a, get called for a lot of interviews. But the question is, where will Sala decide to go coach at is the question. Um, you know, if Minnesota moves on from Mike Zimmer, maybe he goes there. Um, Houston will probably at least look at him, although I don't think they're going to end up hiring him. I think they'll end up getting an offensive guy. Um, there's something like that. So, yeah, that defense for the 49ers is legit. And this Seahawks offense, even though they've been winning, they haven't exactly looked great, even in the most recent game, which was obviously a great win. We can't really say the offense is playing phenomenally right now. And I want to give some players a little bit of time off. But I'm also thinking about how I want to see this offense 
make me believe that they are good enough to beat a team like Green Bay or New Orleans in the playoffs because that's what it's going to take ultimately. Exactly. I mean, we got to ha- try to explode somewhere. I mean, granted, we did explode against th- that crappy New York Jets team and all, too, with that only 40 burger we had. We just need to explode against good defenses like like the Rams and obviously, like you mentioned, teams like Green Bay and New Orleans that are top contenders who will most likely be the one and two seed pending this Sunday, which should they should most likely pull their games off. It's just we just got to get it going on offense and just try to hit and just put up more touchdowns and just getting held to field goals and stalling early in the games and being forced to punt. Right. And obviously there's a pretty good chance that this Niners game won't mean anything to the Seahawks win or lose. So I don't want to put a ton of emphasis on needing to perform in this game, but this would be a pretty good game for us to at least show, even if it's just for like a quarter, even if it's just for the first quarter, just some reason to believe that this offense is starting to figure it out because I will grant you the Rams and uh, Washington. They both have great, um, they both have great defenses, right? So we've been playing some really good defenses lately, but we might have to play the saints in the playoffs. That's another great defense. So something is not totally there with this offense. And in a game like this where winning or losing might not matter that much, I would like to see some steps in the right direction. My concern is that the problem is that we have a lot of wide receivers who are not hundred percent like Lockett doesn't look like he's a hundred percent. David Moore, maybe, maybe not. It kind of depends on what play you're looking on him at. Um, he, he, um, he obviously was playing injured a month ago and it seems like he's working his way back. We don't know if he's a hundred percent yet. <clears throat> Will Disley may never be a hundred percent again after what he's had to go through. Greg Olson was in his first game back last week. So we have a lot of skill position players. Freddie Swain's playing through his shoulder too. Yeah, yeah, him too. He doesn't get on the field that much, though, so I'm not too worried about that. But other than DK Metcalf and I guess now you would say Chris Carson, we're dealing with a lot of problems with our offensive skill players. Yeah. So if that's the issue, then maybe you're better off just giving them the kind of the week off. But if the issue is more just is does Wilson need to play better? does the offensive line need to play better? Does the play calling need to be better? Then this needs to be some kind of a sort of exhibition for what we might do in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Because right now I don't have a ton of confidence in this offense. I will admit that. Yeah. They just got to, they got to get their shit together and just start playing more aggressive and high powered again. Just, we just got to try to just get it back, but we can't afford it. If you mentioned like with players, you know, playing hurt and all too. So Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. But other than that, this game, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there's nothing to play for because there is potentially some stuff to play for. More than likely, there won't really be anything to play for because we know we have the three seed at the minimum and the circumstances that we would need in order to claim a higher seed than that, it's just not looking likely. Uh, Carolina is down to their third string running back and they have no Robbie Anderson, so they are – They don't really have anything. They have no ammunition for that game against the Saints. And it's tough for me to believe that the Bears – it seems like a very bad matchup for the Bears against the Packers. So It's a definite – it's a mismatch. We all saw what happened the last time those two teams faced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm thinking about this game more in terms of what's the best way for this team to gain a advantage going forward in the actual important games. Do we want to rest players? <clears throat> or do we want to try to build some momentum going into the playoffs? I don't know. It's really hard to know this stuff. And you have that whole debate of rest versus rust, which I've always believed that rest is good and that rust often comes down to how well coached your team is. And a good, a well coached team should be able to maintain momentum despite taking a week off and resting starters. But it'll be interesting to see how this team plays it if we get to halftime or midway through the third quarter, and it's becoming clear we have nothing to play for, it'll be interesting to see what we do. And that's one of the things I'm looking for in this game more so than winning or losing, I think. I think I that's kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah. If we just see what happens in the other games and, it's, and they're both out of hand, then that might be the time the poll starters. I agree. Mm-hmm. If, which, which if we know for a fact that the best we will get would be the third, the third seed. You know, bad stuff has happened. 
on that stadium. Yeah, State Farm Stadium, Arizona. Yeah, a lot of bad stuff has happened. That's, you know, Cam had his career end. Sherman had his Seattle career end. Yeah. Earl, Earl Thomas, his Seattle career ended. Disley, if you want to include him. Super Bowl. So, you know, I don't want to have my starters out there any longer than I have to on that stadium, quite frankly. So my hope is that this tremendous QB pressure that we've started to get on these other teams is going to turn into some – is going to turn into some more turnovers because that's one thing that we has kind of gotten away from us lately. Yeah. So I want to see us force some turnovers against the uh, 49ers and parlay those into points. At least two fun or three turnovers. At least two or three. Fact, fun fact. The Seattle Seahawks have had at least one defensive or special teams touchdown every year since they've been a team. Mm-hmm. And this is until this year. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we don't get one on Sunday, then the streak is over. It has to be a pick six. We need a I've been saying picks I've been saying how much I want us to get a pick six. So I don't care who gets in all, just as long as we get a pick six. It could it could be Quandre Dix, it could be DJ Reed, it could be Jamal Adams. I don't care. Just somebody get a pick six just to make it happen. I I I want a pick six on defense or a scoop and score from one of our linebackers if one of our pass rushers is able to force a fumble on a QB strip. It needs to happen. I mean We've been every year. You're, I. That's what I've been saying. I've been one of the pick six, and we've been, and you've, and you've heard me noted in uh, our past previews of how much I wanted to see, say how much we would like to get a pick six or a defensive touchdown. It just hasn't happened this year, and and the streak could potentially end this year if we don't get it in the regular season. Well, the regular season streak, depending on what we do in the in the playoffs, but we need something. We just need that yeah. for a spark, and I agree with it. Yeah, and that's really all there is I got for this one. Uh, it's a weird game, to be sure. We're playing a very depleted team, but a team that is playing tough. Mm-hmm. Um, with the way this defense is playing right now, I feel pretty good about being able to beat anybody. If we get pressure on Bethard, you know he's going to make a lot of mistakes. He's not the kind of quarterback who can deal with that. Mm-hmm. If we can get pressure on Bethard like we did against Goff, then the game will be over before it starts. Right. And that's the main thing I'm looking for right now. And okay. that's really all I got for this game. All right. All right, so y'all heard it here, guys. Make sure you also go subscribe to Brendan Nelson. If you're new to my channel, hit the sub button, hit the thumbs up, ring the bell for notification. And before we go, we want to be yeah. the wish everybody. Oh, yeah, real quick before we end, jersey giveaway starts at midnight tonight. Come by my channel if you want to find out how you can win a jersey. Yep, go to his channel, win a jersey. And at the end, at the end of this, be the first to say a happy new year. And let's hope 2021 is better than 2020 because 2020 fucking sucked because of this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. All right. I'll do, do it here. If you ain't with it, you ain't infamous. And as always, go Seahawks.